Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of In My Plant-Based Kitchen. I am Emma LaRock, a registered holistic nutritionist and a certified plant-based chef. And today is the day of the week that I invite you into my kitchen to talk about plant-based eating for healthy lifestyle and uh, recipes and inspiration, um, all kinds of things, plant-based, answering questions, making food, all those things, all those good things. So uh, thanks for being here to join me for another episode. Um, this is part three of a short series that I am doing about heart health. In the first part, we talked about how hypertension or high blood pressure and how different foods can affect our blood pressure. And we made a delicious creamy kale salad. If you haven't seen that yet, do check it out. In part two, we talked about cholesterol and how what we eat can impact our cholesterol levels. And we made overnight oats, another great heart healthy recipe. And today in part three, we're going to talk about oxidative stress and inflammation. This is another key piece of the heart healthy puzzle and really important to understand in terms of eating uh, um, uh, for a healthy heart and cardiovascular system. So Healthy plant-based diets have been shown to be very effective in reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease by lowering oxidative stress and the resulting inflammation. This has a lot to do with the fact that plant foods, including herbs and spices, are powerful sources of a wide variety of antioxidant and anti-inflammatory rich foods. But before we go any further today, um, I want to talk a little bit about oxidative stress. What is it and why is it a problem? And to understand that, we have to take a step back and talk about free radicals and antioxidants. This might get a little bit sciencey, but I'm sure a lot of you have already heard these terms before. Um, but I do want to go over them because they can be a little bit confusing, and it really helps to understand a little bit about what they actually are and what they, what they, um, you know, how they play into this puzzle. So let's take a few minutes to just go over this quickly. So as the healthy cells in our bodies burn fuel or food for energy, they also burn oxygen. This is a totally natural process that creates fragments of molecules called free radicals. On the molecular level, free radicals are unstable. And that means that they um, each contain an unpaired electron and in an effort to pair up and become stable, they will bind to and steal electrons from other molecules. This is not all bad. Free radicals actually have an important role uh, to play because they help us to get rid of cellular waste and they can be used by immune cells to attack and remove damaged cells that can potentially develop into cancer. However, the problem occurs as it often does when they are too numerous. So too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Um, and then they can begin to destroy healthy cells and normal tissues as well. So the chemical reactions that are caused by free radicals are called oxidation. And when these reactions are under control, they help our bodies to function properly. But when they are uncontrolled, they can cause widespread inflammation within our systems that can contribute to atherosclerosis and heart disease, as well as other diseases like diabetes and cancer and more. So what helps to keep oxidation under control? You might have guessed by now, antioxidants. So antioxidants are molecules that can give an electron to a free radical without becoming unstable themselves. And that helps the free radical to stabilize and become less reactive. So antioxidants are powerful neutralizers that reduce and prevent harm from uncontrolled free radicals. And it's worth noting at this point that it's not only the burning of food for fuel that creates free radicals in our bodies, but also a number of other things, including stress and fatigue, Expo exposure to polluted air, toxic chemicals, radiation, ultraviolet rays, cigarette smoke, consumption of alcohol, all of these things contribute free radical development or cause free, radi de free radical development in our bodies. And these are things, of course, that many of, you know, most of us come across on a daily basis. As this list indicates, there are plenty of things that we may encounter that cause the creation of free radicals, but the great news is that we can eat to combat this, and the types of food we eat have a huge impact from a couple of angles. But before we get to that, let's circle back quickly to the term oxidative stress. So that's what occurs when there is an imbalance between free radicals and antioxidants in your body. So to reiterate, in terms of heart health, this can cause a lot of damage to the heart itself. 
the endothelium, which is the fragile lining that protects our blood vessels and keeps our blood running smoothly, and our cardiovascular system in general. It's harmful in other ways to, the, to our bodies, but we're focusing on heart health today, so we'll leave it at that for now. Now let's talk about what all this means in terms of food. What foods create oxidative stress and which ones can help to reduce it? So first up, ultra processed foods. This is probably not a surprise to anybody watching this. According to the NIH, the National Institute of Health, the nutritional profile of ultra processed diet, um, of an ultra processed diet is associated with the development of cellular alterations that lead to oxidative stress. That's a direct quote from them. Um, processed foods are not doing us any favors in terms of um, helping us to create uh, control free radicals in our body and they're, they're often creating them. In general, meat-based di diets also result in higher levels of inflammation and oxidative stress and there are a couple of important reasons for this. The first one is that the consumption of heme iron, which is found mainly in animal foods, can generate reactive oxygen species and result in oxidative stress. And then nitrates and nitrates that are found in processed foods generate N-nitroso compounds, um, including nitrosamine, which you might have heard in hot dogs and um, cured meats, hams, that's things like that. And these create reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress as well and impair the, uh, the function of blood vessels. But just a, a word, because we talked about nitrates and how beneficial they are from plants in the um, hypertension portion of this series. And that's so don't con confuse the nitrates in pro processed and cured meats with the nitrates that are found from plant foods like beets, because um, those nitrates, uh, your body changes those into nitric oxide. So totally different chemical process and nitric oxide is very helpful in um, for heart health. So We'll leave it at that. There's a lot more to it, but those are two really, really important um, things to, to understand. But when it comes to plants, we've already talked about the key role that antioxidant rich foods play in this whole process. But if there is nothing else you remember from this episode, remember this, antioxidants are foods found, or sorry, antioxidants are found almost exclusively in whole plant, plant foods. I wanna really emphasize this because it's such an important point. Antioxidants are not found in any significant quantity in animal foods or processed foods. The vast majority of antioxidants that are available to us are found in fruit, vegetables, and other whole natural plant foods. So some great examples of foods that are rich in antioxidants, greens, berries, especially blackberries. So blueberries are really known for their antioxidant properties, but blackberries have multiple times more antioxidants. So if you're in an area where blackberries grow like I am, you uh, you know, and we can go get them for free in the summer, that's a really, really positive things thing. Other fruits like cherries and citrus and apples, um, green leafy vegetables, I've already mentioned them, but they bear mentioning twice, um, broccoli, green tea, beans, especially black and red kidney beans. You might be noticing a trend here. These are all richly um, dark, um, um, richly colored fruits and vegetables. And that's a really good clue. Um, darker colors usually indi indicate higher antioxidant content. So again, you don't have to remember all the science behind all of this, but when you're at the grocery store, if you just think about choosing vegetables that are darker in color, fruits that have are richly colored. So perhaps for a, for a great example is cabbage. So both green and red cabbage have their benefits, but if you're talking about an, um, antioxidant qual qualities, your red cabbage is going to, or purple cabbage is going to be a, um, a much better source of antioxidants. Same with sweet potatoes and potatoes. So if when you choose those, like choose those richly colored vegetables and fruits as often as you can, because you're going to be uh, making sure that you are eating an antioxidant rich diet and Hopefully from what I've said so far today, you can understand how important that is on a daily basis to be getting lots of antioxidants into your diet. Okay, so the next thing up is we are going to make a, um, I call it my zingy black bean um, salad. And um, this is a uh, salad that is rich, almost everything in it 
is rich in antioxidants. So um, it's super easy to put together. I'm using the canned bean version because that's even easier. I, I just um, rinsed a can of black beans, black beans, rich in color, rich in antioxidants. They're one of the richest um, sources of antioxidant, which richest beans, uh, red kitty beans, red beans are also great, but these um, black beans are, are a good source of antioxidants. We've got our leafy greens that are a great source of antioxidants. I just have some mixed power greens. One of my favorite things to do, because we know that green vegetables are beneficial for so many, many reasons, the antioxidant um, co um, content in them being just one of those reasons. I like to think whenever I'm eating something, is this something I could put on a bed of greens? And this is a salad I used to make without greens. And I thought, why not? These actually goes really well. And lo and behold, I put some greens in there and oh, and um, and I really like the addition, um, taste and texture wise, as well as of course, increasing the nutritional properties of the, of the um, dish. So we've got a couple of handfuls of leafy green vegetables. The, like I said, these are just power greens, mixed spinach. Uh, I think there's some beet greens in there, some maybe mes mescaline mix, all those different kinds of things. We've got a can um, of black beans. So this is primarily a bean salad. And we're gonna put a lot of other things in it. This makes a really, really nice lunch or side dish um, to accompany any meal. Many of us struggle to get enough beans into our diet. They're such a great source of fiber and iron and calcium and all kinds of different nutrients. So they're a great thing to get in on a daily basis um, as much as you can. Okay, so we've got the, the beans and the greens. We're doing so well so far. We are gonna put in a couple of green onions. So the whole allium family, again, rich in antioxidants, they actually, um, so really any of them, uh, we're gonna be eating this raw. So I wanna make sure I'm chopping up the uh, white part into pretty, like I don't want a big uh, mouthful of, of green onions. So we're gonna chop up the white part pretty small. This is gonna give the um, salad a really nice little bite. If you don't tolerate onions or you don't want to put onions in for some reason, you could use maybe a little bit of garlic, minced garlic. You could use a shallot instead. Um, you could you just use a little bit of onion, you know, regular red onion or something like that instead. But I really love using the green onion because it gives me that stronger onion taste. And they're fairly mild anyway, which is nice in, when you're using them raw. But you get that a bit of a stronger onion, oniony taste from the green or the white section. And then I'm going to just roughly julienne these, proper julienne, but close enough. For some nice, nice um, texture and decorative green. So I'm sticking that in my salad. When you think about color, again, when you think about color in um, in your food, the more colorful, not only does it make the dish more appealing, but it makes it more nutritious as well. Because as we've talked about before, eating the rainbow, um, the idea of eating the rainbow when you, different nutrients course correlate roughly with um, colors in food. So when you're eating a really colorful dish, you can um, be rest assured that you're getting a lot of, you know, a good spectrum of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and so on, phytochemicals in general. Um, so we've got also for our vegetables, um, the, my original recipe calls for one yellow or orange pepper um, diced up, but I had these little sweet peppers in my fridge. So I actually really love the shape of these. So I'm just gonna slice those roughly. I don't even mind the seeds. If you take the seeds and just take those out but I don't mind the seeds in mine, so I'm gonna leave those in. And there are hardly any anyways. I'm gonna stick those in my salad. I have a few more orange ones as well. Open those up. So I'm using a bit of yellow and a little bit of orange. So give it a little bit more visual appeal as well. Okay. 
Next step, I've got aroma tomato. If you have cherry tomatoes, those are also really nice in here, but you wanna dice these up fairly small. Maybe a small meat, small meat, small dice would be the, I'm gonna cut them in half again. Really going to be a true dice so I'm cutting into wedges, but sort of square. Fairly small. We're going to get our red color in our lycopene. Another phytochemical, and of course, tomatoes are antioxidant rich too. A lot of these vegetables that I'm including, um, although of course, tomato is actually a fruit. Um, are vitamin E and vitamin C rich, which both are powerful antioxidants. So um, the last thing is we're going to add um, an avocado, which avocado is a great source of A, vitamin A, vitamin C, fiber, um, all kinds of great nutrients as well. So, um, so again, pretty much everything we're putting in here is a good, <laughs> is um, helpful in terms of antioxidant content. So I'm just, this bowl is maybe a little small to be doing this mixing, but you get the idea. For the dressing, I am going to use the juice of one lime. And this doesn't have any seeds in it, so it's an easy one to just stick a fork in and juice up that lime. I think this actually this is a pretty juicy lime, so I think I'm going to just do the one half, because you want about two tablespoons of lime juice. I don't want it to be too, too limey. And I'm gonna add some spices. So because we're gonna have the um, whole fat from the avocado, um, I'm not going to, I'm not adding any oil to this. Oil can be one of those foods that actually can create free radicals because as you denature it and it's very fragile, um, free radicals can develop. So one of the good reasons to try to limit or eliminate oil from your, from your diet. Um, but I don't think we're, we're, we're not going to, or I, I can tell you that we're not going to need the oil in this recipe because the beans are going to provide us a lot of, um, of the, you know, kind of, um, substance that is going to help to absorb the lime juice. So we're not going to get a bunch of lime juice at the bottom. And then we've got our healthy fat from the avocado that is going to help us to absorb the fat soluble vitamins, the vitamin E, K, so on, that are important to get from this, um, from these foods. And just cut off the end like that and peel this. You want to, you don't want to, I, I like to try to peel avocados rather than um, scoop them out because a lot of their, the, the best fiber is found um, right beside the um, skin. Just going to dice that up. So I have a little diced avocado in. I'll add the other one after. Um, but before I do that, I probably should have added the spices first. Um, so I've got some chili powder and some paprika, some smoked paprika to add to this. And both of these are actually um, really antioxidant rich as well. They both have um, vitamins A and C, and I've got a little a pinch of salt in there as well. Um, lots of great minerals. Also, um, chili powder in particular is is known to be very helpful um, for blood pressure, for healthy blood pressure. So this truly is a very heart healthy lunch that you can make up for yourself. And it's absolutely delicious too. It's just full of flavor. We don't have any, you know, a, a ton of salt or a ton of, but all the flavor is coming from the spices and the, the foods that we're adding. And last but not least, we're gonna add some cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, my husband does not like cilantro. So I usually keep half of the salad without any cilantro in it. So you're gonna want, you know, anywhere from a quarter cup to half a cup of cilantro. I don't worry too much about stemming it. The stems are very soft and edible in my mind. So if you wanna stem yours, go for it. You do you, but you can see we're getting a 
beautiful, colorful, and I'll plate this up and share a proper picture of it with you, but just an absolutely delicious bean salad full of goodness, full of flavor, um, mm -hmm. full of antioxidants. So really helpful in terms of um, keeping your body in a good oxidative balance and avoiding that oxidative stress that can be harmful to our heart health. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This is the end of the Heart Healthy series as well. Um, I have been thinking about doing a series on, you know, perhaps gut health or um, so if you, anyway, if you have suggestions or things that you'd really like to hear about, I'd love to hear from you. Stick it in the comments below. Uh, appreciate a like for the video if you like it. Um, and if you don't want to miss any future episodes, be sure to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to my newsletter for the recipes. And um, I hope to hear from you soon and see you next week. Have a great week.